guys, this is Dr. Rajaratna here. We're going to do PYQs. As I said, previous year's questions are extremely, extremely important. And this one is about NEET PG 2021 questions. And if you can see, NEET PG 2021 actually covered a lot of questions in ophthalmology and a wide range of topics, starting from simple ones to complex ones. So we will start with uh, the simple one, which is very clinically oriented. Okay, so the first question, as you can see, it says a 20-year-old female, Okay, a 20 year old female with history of contact lens use has itching, has foreign body sensation and has also, I think the options, I mean the question actually had even some kind of discharge. Okay, and it is an image based question. All right. Now, what is it image that is given to you? The image is this. Now, what do you see here? So, you'll have to see it total. Okay, and then we look at the options. Now, First, let's look at this image based question. Okay, as an image, we look at it. So you can see that the upper lid has been everted. Yes. So this is the upper lid, which has been everted. So you are seeing the upper palpebral conjunctiva. Okay, so what you're seeing is the upper palpebral conjunctiva, typically the tarsal. Yes, because you have the tarsal plate and just over that, that part, portion of conjunctiva. Now, what do you see there? Do you see these huge papillae? Yes. So, these are giant papillae. So, we have papillae. So, you have papillae. And why do I call these as giant papillae? So, giant papillae are between 1 to 3 millimeter diameter. All right. So, giant papillae, what is the diameter? 1 to 3 millimeter. Now, we have macro papillae and tiny papillae. Yes. So, macro is when they are between 0.3 to 1 millimeter. So, you can have tiny papillae lesser than 0.3 also. Is that clear? So, these are giant. So, what exactly is a papilla? You have conjunctival epithelium. So, what is the type of epithelium? So, when we are revising this question, let's fata fat revise everything also. Okay. So, conjunctival epithelium, what type of epithelium? It is a non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Is that clear? non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. So, this epithelium when it undergoes hyperplasia, we call it papilla. So, what is a papilla? Papilla is nothing but epithelial hyperplasia. Okay. Now, what are the causes of GPC? Okay. So, this is a giant papillary conjunctivitis. Okay. So, the diagnosis is G. P, C. So, you can get giant papillary conjunctivitis as part of contact lens use as a reaction to ocular prosthesis. Number three, to exposed suture ends and also as part of VKC that is vernal keratoconjunctivitis or spring cutar. Okay. So, in all these you can get giant papillae. So, we call it giant papillary conjunctivitis. See, in, when you see giant papillae in VKC, your diagnosis would be VKC rather than GPC. Is that clear? Okay. So, now let's see in a given question and this particular image, what is your answer. See, they have given us very, very clearly that there is a history of contact lens use and the age, if you see, it's an older age. So, what were the options that were given to us in the question? In the exam, there was VKC, there was trachoma, there was GPC, so, let's uh, just put it as maybe ophthalmia or neonatorum, okay. All right. Now, definitely it's not ophthalmia or neonatorum because let, uh, the age is 20 years. Ophthalmia or neonatorum is a neonates within one month of 
बद सो ऑब्वियसली इट्स नॉट एंड वी के सी इज सीन इन यंग बॉयज टिपिकली इन यंग बॉयज and it spontaneously resolves at puberty so this is 20 year old female doesn't fit the description and we have an additional contact lens use so probably not this and trachoma trachoma you have primarily follicles yes you do have papillae but primarily follicles yes so again it's not trachoma this is a clear cut case of giant papillary conjunctivitis due to contact lens use okay so now i told you what are the other causes of gpc so let's take a look at what is this ocular prosthesis so can you see here in this image on the right eye yeah on the right side if you see so there is a thysis bulbi which is cosmetically not very good so we are putting an artificial eye over it okay so this is the prosthesis so this can you know when it is not fitting well because you are putting it into the eye like this right so there is a uh, ill fit and every time the patient blinks it rubs on the palpebral conjunctiva and causes this mechanical irritation so i'll tell the uh, pathophysiology of gpc also so do you understand what is a prosthesis so probably next time they're going to give you two images they give you the image of a giant papilla and they also show you this so then it will not be contact lens right then it will be ocular prosthesis is that clear so our ocular prosthesis is an artificial eye yes artificial eye means not the bionic eye bionic eye is different with electrodes and all that it is fitted on the retina not this this is just a uh, a, a prosthetic fit only for cosmetic purpose all right normally we bury it so that it is not protruding out neither nor not nor that small edge so when i make a knot and there's a small end no so if it is exposed what will again happen whenever the patient blinks it's going to rub on the eyelid and therefore the palpebral conjunctiva it is going to result in mechanical irritation so as i said what is the pathology of gpc so it is and immune mediated process and what immune mediated process so immune mediated and also mechanical irritation yes so how does this immune mediated thing work so there is a accumulation of proteins contact lens and also as i said primarily they have to decrease the contact lens usage time yes and if with so much of gpc what you need to do you get that so from the anterior communicating artery when there is an aneurysm won't it hit the chiasma yes and that is the most common site of aneurysm where is the most common site of aneurysm the anterior communicating artery have we got our answer so we've got anterior communicating artery aneurysm which can hit the central crossing nasal fibers at the chiasma resulting in by temporal hemi anopia is that clear all right now can you also see that basilar artery coming there and then you have your posterior cerebral artery yes so this is your basilar artery so basically what is your circle of willis circle of willis is a communication between the ica and the posterior circulation which is your basilar artery yes from your vertebral artery you get the basilar artery so that is what is circle of willis and yes an aneurysm there can affect your chiasma now on the same note do we have a posterior communicating artery and something in relation to ophthalmology yes posterior communicating artery aneurysm can cause a third nerve palsy yes just keep it in mind sometime later we can discuss that yes so now we have answer to this particular question so you know what this image is so this image shows a visual field defect which is a bitemporal hemi anopia is that clear okay what all have i told you photophobia watering and blepharospasm blepharo means lid spasm tight closing so these three this is called the triad of congenital glaucoma yes the symptoms which form the triad of 
or the clinical features that form the triad of glaucoma. Now, which of the following is the most common feature? Watering. Watering is the most common sign or symptom of congenital glaucoma. Is that clear? Now, you have to counsel this revolting teen to take up glasses only. If there were contact lens and without contact lens intolerance in the option, probably we can talk about contact lens. So, given our options there, no LASIK, no FEMTO, no ICL. So, counsel the child to wear glasses. Yes, is that clear? Glasses with cylinder because it is still myopic astigmatism. It is irregular astigmatism, probably your uh, spectacles will not work. In that case, probably we have to talk about rigid contact lens. Yes, your RGP, rigid gas permeable contact lenses in that case. So, this is a beautiful question, very, 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 you know, clinically oriented and very, you know, thought provoking. 